Hello, and welcome to a short video on how to use Measurand's Rotadata conversion software. The Rotadata program takes raw data readings collected from a Campbell Scientific data logger and converts it into usable Cartesian engineering units that can be viewed in our SAA View software or imported into a third party analysis application such as Microsoft Excel. The raw data program is accessed by clicking on the data conversion button in the SAA suite. When you first launch the raw data program, you'll be prompted to select the type of conversion that you'll be performing. A reset conversion is done to set up the project and configure all the various settings required to do automated conversions in the future. Once you've done a reset conversion on your data, you can then select the auto option to use those pre-configured settings to automate the conversion. By default, we'll run through a reset conversion. So we click the reset button and we're presented with the raw data select screen where it will ask us to select our project. By default, it will show you the files from the last project that you converted. If you want to convert a different project, simply click on the new project button and navigate into the folder that contains your raw data files collected from the data logger. By default, we're looking for the SAA underscore data dot dat file. Once you've located these files, click the open button and it will populate the window with the project info and any of the ShapeArray files that were found. If you are doing a conversion with a super shape array, which is multiple horizontal arrays combined together to form one large array, or if you're working with convergence shape arrays, shape arrays installed on the outline of a tunnel, then you would need to provide a calibration file, which is done in this site file section by clicking the browse option and navigating to the file. For this example, we're just going to simply convert some vertical shape array data. Once you've selected your project files, click the OK button and you'll see some processing occur and then you will be presented with the settings dialog. In the settings dialog, you configure the various conversion settings required to properly convert the raw data into Cartesian engineering units. You'll see a list of all the shape arrays that were discovered in the project files, as well as columns to configure each one of the settings for each one of the arrays. The vertical checkbox column determines whether the shape array is installed vertically or horizontally. The ref equals fire checkbox determines which end of the shape array will be used as the Cartesian origin point. Typically for vertical shape arrays, this will be the far eye bolt end. However, depending on some applications, you may wish to select the near cable end. Ref equals far is the eye bolt end. And if we deselect that checkbox, then the reference will be the cable end. The next field is the as deg field, which is simply an offset for your azimuth measured in degrees. So when you install the shape array on site, there's a physical X mark on the instrument that will determine the direction of your positive X axis. In order to orient that positive X axis to a different direction on site, you'll measure with a protractor that's included with the shape array an offset from that desired direction to the X mark on the instrument. Whatever values measured with that protractor is what you'll enter into the as deg field during your conversions. This will have the software automatically reorient the axes so that positive X is going in the direction you expect it to. The program will list the number of segments for the instrument in the num seg field and the adjustments on off button will allow you to configure adjustments to the data. By default, a vertical shape array will have cyclical applied. You typically won't need to apply any other adjustments. 
start segment and end segment are columns that allow you to enable or disable segments at the top or the bottom of the instrument. By default, we recommend leaving all of those on. And slave segments is a feature that'll allow you to ignore data from a particular segment uh, and have it take on the same values as an adjacent segment. This is useful in the case where one particular segment happens to fail, but the rest of the instrument is in good working order so that monitoring can continue. Once you've configured your shape array settings, you have the option to enable email notifications. So in the bottom right corner of the settings tab, there's an enable email checkbox and an email notifications button. Clicking this button will allow you to input email settings so that if raw data encounters something that would require a notification to the user, it can send you an email in order to let you know that it, something happened. There are three options for notification types. There are processing errors, power issues, or low power measured at the top. Once you've configured your email notifications, you can then select your export settings. By default, raw data will create two files from the raw data. One will be a file that can be viewed in SAA view, and the other will be a plain text comma delimited file that can be imported into other applications for analysis. The format and the type of data that are included in that file are configured through the export options. The first thing you'll select is the type of data that will be included in your export file. By default, it is the absolute position data, what we also call absolute shape or cumulative deviation. You have other options that you can select here, including incremental deviation, raw accelerations, the tilts in radians of each of the segments, cumulative and incremental displacement, as well as curvature, bend radius, and temperature. Once you've selected the type of data that will be included in your export file, you can configure some options for the format of that file. The first option you can select is whether or not you'll produce a comma delimited dat file or simply a matlab.mat file. The next option allows you to select whether your units will be in metric units or imperial measurements. The next option will be the ordering of the data columns. By default, it will present all the X values, followed by all the Y values, followed by all the Z values, However, you can change it to output them as ordered pairs of X, Y, Z values. So X, Y, Z for one segment, X, Y, Z for the next, and so on and so forth. The next option is whether or not all of the data that has been converted will be output into the DIY file. Alternatively, you can select new data only, and it will only output newly converted readings. The next option is unique stamped files. Each time you convert the data, it will overwrite the existing DIY file. If you select the unique stamped files option, it will place a timestamp in the file name and your files will never be overwritten. Seg length ref equals far includes some extra information in the output file that's required for various applications such as G-Tilt to determine the length of your segments. The raw file names checkbox will have your exported file names match the file names for the raw data files. If this checkbox is not selected, the exported data will contain the type of the instrument, such as SAV, 
and the serial number of the instrument as the file name. The use header checkbox determines whether or not there will be headers in the data file. Optionally, you can also select templates. If you select the use template option, you'll have the option to select one of the pre-configured templates for either Vista Data Vision or GTILT that will automatically configure the various data types and DIY output settings to match what's required for those various services. Once you've configured your settings and your export options, you can click the Continue button to continue the conversion. As processing happens, you'll see some progress in the window. And when the conversion is complete, you will see an exit code success message displayed. And then you can look at the files on your hard drive. The first output file that you're interested on the hard drive will be the multi SAA allcart.mat file. This is the file that you can open in our SAA view software in order to visualize your converted data. Alternatively, if you go into the DIY folder, there will be a .dat file that contains comma delimited data that you can import into your application of choice for further analysis. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at support.measurand.com on the web or send us an email at support at measurand.com.